Good morning everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Avocado Insider series. It's your host Harshad Kolha. And today I have a very special guest from Israel uh, for our uh, Avocado Insider series. His name is Dr. Roberto Nathan and he was former extension officer for extension services at the Ministry of Agriculture Israel. He specializes in soil, water and plant nutrition with an emphasis on avocado. He's consulting huge avocado orchards and nurseries mainly in Israel and Latin America and he has worked with Dr. Ben Yaakov of Israel. Dr. Ben Yaakov was the father of Israeli avocado industry and both of them, Dr. Roberto Nathan and Dr. Ben Yaakov, have researched together on avocado rootstocks in Israel. In this episode, Dr. Roberto Nathan talks about two things. Firstly, his history with India. It's a very interesting story. In fact, his mother has worked with Mahatma Gandhi back in 1940s. I'm going to share some pictures that he shared with me. You can see in the pictures his, uh, where his mother is alongside Mahatma Gandhi. And secondly, he talks about climate requirements for avocados. Before we proceed to the discussion, I have a request. If you have any questions regarding commercial avocado farming, post it in the comment section down below and I'll ask Dr. Roberto Nathan those questions and I'll share those questions in a video on uh, the YouTube channel so that that can clarify your doubts. Hi. So, first of all, thank you for agreeing to uh, come to my Avocado Insider series uh, uh, for YouTube. Let me give you a brief introduction about me and my project. Uh, my name is Harshad Godha and I am pioneering commercial avocado production in India. Now, uh, I studied in the UK and there I used to eat avocados a lot. And one day I saw on the packaging that it says it was sourced from Israel. So I figured that if Israel can grow avocados in such hot climatic conditions, maybe avocados can grow in India too. So that's how it all began. Then I visited Israel. I spent a month there in a kibbutz called Kibbutz Magan. And uh, I lived with a grower for a month. I learned about, well, I didn't learn, but like I saw how to plant avocado trees. I met with industry experts. I met nursery owners and backhouse managers. So that's how my story began. And now I'm importing avocado plants from uh, Israel to India for my own orchards and to sell it to other people as well. So I'm doing this interview to educate other farmers on what are the best practices of avocado from A to Z, everything. So can you tell my viewers a bit more about yourself, your background, uh, what's your history with uh, agriculture, Israel? Okay, so my name is Dr. Roberto Natan. I worked for 40 years in the extension, uh, I was an extension officer in the extension service of the Ministry of Agriculture in Israel. Mm. I retired five days ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I counseled several governments and growers around the globe, everywhere. Uh, my specialist my area of specialization is uh, soil, water, and plant nutrition. Mm. I've done a lot of work in avocado. Okay. Even currently, I'm working in avocado, mm. in avocado orchards, in avocado nurseries. So in Israel and, or abroad? Uh, in Israel, in Israel or... and abroad, especially okay. in Latin America, countries uh, like Mexico, Peru, Chile, Colombia, Spain. Oh, okay etc. Uh -huh. And uh, I visited India a number of times right. in the can, past. Can you tell me more about your uh, history with India? Well, uh, the, my history, my, let's call it a romance with India, started before I was born. My mother is a survivant of the Second World War. And uh, she escaped from the war. I will not get into the details to India. Okay. She was sick 
and uh, she was a fugitive and she was actually saved by the people of India in that time in Bombay. Okay. Uh, that was the name of the city at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the 40s. And she became the first secretary of the um, British Embassy. And she had the opportunity of working with Mahatma Gandhi. Oh. He, I have pictures of her yeah. uh, shaking hands with Mahatma Gandhi and uh, walking with him. She was, uh, of course, how not, a great admirer of this very particular person. Mm. And she's an admirer of the, of the Indian people. She That's... told me, I grew up uh, hearing stories about the people of India, about Indian places. Mm. And in the 80s, I was uh, sent to India to work. Uh, my first project in India was in the area of Kutch. Okay, in Gujarat. In, uh, yes, no, in Kutch. Okay, in the Kutch. north. Kutch is in Kutch. Gujarat. Yeah, it's in Gujarat. It's uh, it's a coastal city, isn't it? it? It's no, it's near the border with Pakistan. Okay, I get it. Yeah. That's what I remember. I'm talking yeah. about 1986. Yeah. That okay. was my first visit to the area mm -hmm. for uh, soil reclamation. Okay. Then uh, the, the second time I came to India was to conduct a soil survey for the main tobacco company in India. Don't remember the name. That was a, a year later, maybe 87, maybe 88 but not later than that for a tobacco company to advise them to counsel in um, many farms. I spent more than a month with them. We even uh, flew from Bombay to, to, to many places with them to see several farms, mango and other crops and to counsel them, et cetera, et cetera. I went back, I, I spent in India altogether several months, but in different uh, visits okay. in the late eighties and the early nineties. Right. And since then, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. I didn't go back. <laughs> Not because I don't want to, yeah. but because it just didn't happen, but right. I can tell you, since I teach here mm -hmm. in the international for the International Center of uh, International Assistance, I, ha I had a lot of Indian students of mine, many, many over the years. I'm talking hundreds. Okay. So I have a close relationship with India, yeah, I <laughs> if can, you can call it. That. Also, like when this, you mentioned that your mother worked with uh, Mahatma Gandhi. That's an amazing story. That's, That's really... an incredible story. Nobody yeah. believes that. And yeah. I show the pictures yeah. and uh, you see my mother with yeah. Mr. Gandhi. If you can share and, those pictures uh, with me, that would be amazing. I will, I will. Uh, she wrote a book. Okay. And I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. the pictures are there at least one picture was published it's in the book okay i if i'm not mistaken i didn't look at the book for a long time mm -hmm. but if i'm not mistaken there is at least one picture of my mother with gandhi mm -hmm. in the book so i can okay. scan it and send it to you no yeah. problem <laughs> that would be perfect right i will find uh, the pictures uh, for sure <laughs> great so can you tell me a bit more about your work on avocados with, uh, in uh, Latin America? Or... Oh, in Latin America, uh, my work with avocado, I started working in avocado with uh, Professor Ben Yaakov. Professor Ben Yaakov, it's a very well-known uh, avocado researcher. Yes, I've heard He's about the father that. of the rootstocks that uh, Azera uh, markets today. 
Okay. I work close to here uh, with him. One of the varieties uh, that um, was developed by Ben Yaakov is called Trifin 99. Mm -hmm. This variety, uh, I remember the original tree. I was together with Ben Yaakov when yeah. we propagated it in, um, in a farm that belongs to the Ministry of Agriculture. I remember Mr. Ben Yaakov, Professor Ben Yaakov, sorry, <laughs> uh, very well. And uh, he worked a lot in Mexico. He brought a lot of uh, genetic material from there because as we all know, this is the origin of avocado. Mm. And uh, all his work, I work with him. Until uh, now I work with his uh, successors, Professor Ben Yaakov uh, passed away uh, about 10 years ago, I think. Okay. Uh, I worked together with his brother, who is also a scientist, but in mm. flowers. Yeah. And uh, I know the family very well. Uh, that's the way how I started working in avocado. I also counsel many, many avocado farms in Israel and in Latin America, mostly in Mexico and in Peru, okay. where uh, I have a lot of former students that today run avocado farms. Right. Uh, some of them huge farms. And I'm talking about 4,000 hectares, 3,000 hectares, that's and so on. So much. Yes, yes. Uh, I visited the, 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 those farms a couple of months ago. Okay. And I'm traveling to Peru this Friday, coming Friday. <laughs> okay. And I will be visiting some of my former students. <laughs> ah, sounds like a great vacation. Uh, it's work with vacation. For me, it's pleasure okay. because I see people that uh, I know and they were my students. They still call me professor. Okay. And I'm not a professor, but uh, in Spanish, professor means teacher. Yeah. Okay. And they call me professor and mm. okay. <laughs> right. I should call you professor as well. No, no, no. Huh? You can call me Roberto is good enough. <laughs> right, so uh, can you tell me more about the climatic requirements that are more su most suitable for avocado farming? Uh, uh, the main, from the climate standpoint, uh, avocado does not tolerate cold weather. Okay. So it should be planted in places where temperatures do not uh, drop below, I would say five, six degrees, although it can happen that yeah. it, the, it goes even a little below. There are some rootstocks that can tolerate that, tolerate that but I wouldn't do. Okay. So we're talking about, uh, but let's say template temperatures, not too cold and not yeah. too warm. Okay. Or, or on the other extreme, yeah. if it becomes very hot, and especially very dry, yeah. so the tree will suffer. Okay. So we're talking about template weather conditions, yeah. not too cold, not too hot. So the place where I'm growing avocado, the, the orchard that I'm planning to grow, the temperature can go a bit uh, around four or five degrees. But uh, like last, uh, last week, we had a bit of an extreme temperature and it got up to two degrees at night. It's not so bad okay. if these are um, occasional events. Okay. And not it's not the average. Yeah. yeah. It it's happens not the average. Also. It's, yeah. Extreme conditions that happens once in a long time, so okay. it's not a, wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. As long as we're talking two degrees Celsius plus, not minus. Okay. And. Uh, uh, it, even during summers, my climatic conditions are a bit extreme, so it can go up to 42, 43. So we are not focused on Haas. Like we don't, we know we cannot grow Haas and Lamb Haas. So my main it's focus rare. is, 
yeah my main focus is on pinkerton and ettinger pinkerton yes. okay and ettinger because i've seen those work in israel at 40 degrees in kibbutz magan so i thought maybe it can tolerate that much in bhopal well it depends on humidity right 40 42 degrees is yes. is very high for avocado yes but if it comes on a hot spell yeah. with very low temperatures during the spring yeah. it will uh, result in the uh, in the um, fruit abort the fruit will abort right uh, so depends on the season when it happens okay there so are some seasons yes. periods in which the plant is very sensitive to extreme conditions. Okay. We're talking especially during fruit set. Right. During right. fruit set, the fruit that it's just set is very sensitive to extreme conditions. Okay. So you you can change the microclimate by using physical techniques, but it uh, depends on humidity. Right. Okay. And uh, we have to go deeper yeah. and learn the climate for a special area yeah. if you want to plant avocado before mm. making the decision. Right. Okay. So uh, regarding that fruit set, uh, we don't have that extreme temperatures during fruit set. It's after the fruit has already been there on the tree for a while. So I think fruit set begins in India in during this time in February. And then, okay. and then uh, the extreme temperatures that I'm talking about will occur in May. So that's better. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's better, but still we need to study okay. exactly very carefully the climate yeah. is because if it becomes very extreme even after the sensitive period yeah it could cause damage right you can uh, it can result in some fruit abscission etc right all right guys that's it for this video in the next video we're going to talk about soil type for avocado farming with dr robert nathan Please subscribe so that you can automatically you will automatically get notified when I upload a new video. Thank you.